As you can see, this boot camp is pretty messed up because this drill sergeant is actually shooting one of the recruits with a gun. In other words, he's killing one of the recruits. The recruit can be thought of as a symbol for a cell, and the sergeant is a symbol for toxin B. So this should help you remember that toxin B is cytotoxic and can induce cellular apoptosis. So drill sergeant with a B on his shirt killing a recruit for toxin B can induce cellular apoptosis. In reality, both toxin A and toxin B can cause intestinal fluid secretion and apoptosis, but toxin A is more enterotoxic and toxin B is more cytotoxic. However, it is most important that you remember that both toxins can disrupt the cytoskeleton. To help you remember this, we've shown a skull on each drill sergeant, which you can see on their arms. So skull or skeleton for cytoskeleton. So remember, both toxin A and toxin B disrupt the integrity of the cytoskeleton within intestinal mucosal cells. Next, notice that we've included some tires as part of the course. Once the recruits crawl through the poop, they have to quickly hop through the tires and then climb up the wall without getting shot by Sergeant B. The tires are circular and resemble a cell membrane. However, a cell membrane completely surrounds the cell, whereas the tires have large holes in their center, so the circumferential rubber doesn't completely cover them. So I guess you could say that the tires are kind of like a membrane, but not quite. So a pseudomembrane. Therefore, the tires on the ground like this will be our symbol for pseudomembranes. We've included them in this image to help you remember that toxin A and toxin B cause pseudomembranous colitis. Next, the fact that the tires are completely covered in mud should help you remember that toxin A and toxin B also cause diarrhea. So brown watery mud for diarrhea. This is an endoscopic image of a patient with pseudomembranous colitis. Notice that there are a bunch of raised yellow lesions along the colon. For example, right here, right here, and so forth. Hopefully you get the idea. Okay, let's move on to discuss how C. diff is diagnosed. Like I mentioned a second ago, after the recruits crawl through the poop, they have to quickly hop through the tires and then climb up the wall. If you look closely at the wall, you can see that we've shown three chains dangling down from above. The word chain should help you remember polymerase chain reaction or PCR. So C. diff can be diagnosed using PCR. This is done by obtaining a stool sample, and then the nucleic acid of the organism is amplified, which can detect the gene that encodes for toxin B. To help you remember that the toxin is detected in the stool, we've shown this guy sampling the poopy muddy course. So guy sampling stool for diagnosed with a stool sample. 